seeing this. Something's happened to me. Um. Kara, congratulations. I really liked Ash. I mean, she's very forthright. She's very opinionated and she's blunt. And I'm wondering what you gave her kind of, you know, secretly something that wasn't in the script that, that you wanted to give her. The most important thing about her that, that I could convey in this project was just this, the magnitude of her love for Joe, just the, just the, that it would be worth making all of these maybe ill-advised decisions just to, to, to make sure that it was very clear that it was a love that she could not just walk away from. Wow, isn't that amazing? Now this, it's a sci-fi story and kind of a complex one, but at its core, that's what it is. It's a love story. And yeah. that despite, you know, the possibility of AI dominating our lives, that will never change. Can you tell me a little bit about that? You must have thought about that. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I think that there's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know about what AI could could become and how it could uh, be a part of our lives. And and I think the the super interesting questions that this movie brings up is is around love and loving a digital creation and what is that and what about, and Adam spoke brilliantly um, as well about you know what if we are the digital creation what if that's you you know what makes you worthy of love and and to think about that I think is is like mind blowing as well you know and and the best that yeah. you can do is just love each other and look after each other and and um and and strive toward greater and greater empathy what is happening i saw you die i saw someone kill you there's a technology the first digital universe i found a way in Track him. I'm fixing it. Now, they're after you. When you play Ash, you're in two worlds, two different worlds. Um, and you have to make the, the, the correspondence of them natural, which, I mean, you do. So how did you achieve it? I think... The thing that's beautiful about the script is that Ash has just totally bought in. She believes, she believes that the digital universe is as valid as her own real world, right? Yeah. And then of course, all of that gets upended and rocked uh, as we go, which will let, you know, people figure out for themselves as they watch it. But, yeah. but that, you know, she has bought in. She has totally bought in. I mean, it, it raised alarm bells in me and I'm sure it did in you. And I kind of just pushed it aside. I didn't want to think about it. But this is the great thing about the film that it does make you think about what our future could look like. And I think that's a very strong point of the film. Yes. And what what are the ethics around that? I think but there's so much that we're just still grappling with. Like, I feel like... Like I didn't grow up with the internet as a young no. kid. I didn't have that. And now raising kids who have access to so much more at such a young age, it's um Oh dear, yeah. Completely different worlds than I grew up in. But I feel like it must have been similar for my parents with like, you know, even things like television and computers being you know having a, a telephone in every room you know that wasn't something yes that was, right so, yeah so you know there's all of these different but I think the thing is that when you zoom out and look at how much technology we've developed as a species in such a short time like we don't know we don't understand the ramifications of I've said this earlier today but I mean it we don't even really understand the ramifications of cars I want to talk about Ash's wardrobe which is um, oh thank you yes it's conservative, it it's elegant. Mm -hmm. Tell me about how wardrobe, and this one in particular, affects your work. Uh, I thought that uh, 
you know, she just, she, Ash is someone who needs to be able to move, you know, yeah. it was very practical on one level, but also just practical. That it was just very beautiful and very of the world, very sort of, um, it, I think, uh, that our designer nailed, um, that in the, like futuristic without being like, you know, aluminum foil jumpsuits, you know, <laughs> like it, she, she really nailed that future vibe. I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful clothes. I must say, um, d this was shot in North Bay. Am I right? No, Winnipeg, but similar. Idea. Winnipeg, yeah. Winnipeg. Now you're a girl from Bob Cajun. You and know it. Yes. Yeah. Do you get back much? Sometimes, but not, my parents moved away from there. So, so we don't really have oh, yeah. family in Bob Cajun itself anymore. Um, but I did bring my husband back there um, to, uh, I was like, you have to see this place. And it was so funny because when I called the Bob Cajun Inn uh, to make a reservation, my husband was actually standing beside me while I was on the phone making this reservation. And he could hear the person on the other end uh, say, when I told them my name, I said, it's Kara G making a reservation. He was like, G, oh, are you one of the G's? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that carries a certain meaning in Bob Cajun. So <laughs> that is hilarious. And of course, yeah. you know, the tragically hip song, Bob Cajun. They put us on the map. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Yes. That's so cool. I just love talking to you. Thank you so much, Kara. Thank I you so it. much. Thank you. Have a See great you on your next project, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. So what does that make me? This is as real as anything I know. We're risking exposure. You can flick a switch and you are gone like you never existed. It's time for a reboot. Is this real?